everybody, I'm Jeff Bauer. I'm Joey Marino. Welcome to Actor Chats. This week we have our second segment with Dan Frischman. You probably know him from Head of the Class, where he played the nerd Arvid. This episode, Dan talks about appearing on Facts of Life, both as a background actor and then later as a special guest. He also talks about Head of the Class, as well as directing for Nickelodeon. So here's Actor Chats with Dan Frischman. How long was it before you got Head of the Class? That was another six years after I got out here, I got Head of the Class. Wow. And that was just a normal spate of auditions. Was there any favorite roles within that period before? Uh, yeah, there was. I, I, um, I did a lot of guest star roles. Probably the biggest one was on Fact, The Facts of Life. Remember with uh, Tootie and mm-hmm. oh, yes. uh, Mrs. Garrett, yeah. I think. Anyway, I, was, I played a uh, pimply-faced kid, Carl Pizza Face Price. And uh, they all make fun of me because of my pimply face, and I'm in a slam book. And but it turns out I'm a nice guy, and I ended up having a nice lunch with Blair. And uh, turns out all turns out very nice. <laughs> uh, but that was the first time I really uh, made any kind of inroads, and that was the, the first time my parents weren't as worried <laughs> about my future, career, po- future <laughs> yeah, career possibilities. I about the, the the craft aspect of it. Were you just kind of taking that as it came? Because I know that was a three-camera type yeah. mm-hmm. setup. How was it right. working with three cameras, and did you have to adjust to that? Yeah, um, you know, I had done some extra work. As a matter of fact, I, I had done extra work on the facts of life a year before no I was a way. guest star on it. They always tell you, oh, no, it's the death. Yeah, yeah but uh, at the time, I don't, know, I don't know how it is today since I, I don't know about the atmosphere world, but... It paid like three hundred fifty dollars for the day, no <laughs> and I wasn't way. even oh, in the wow. I wasn't even in the union, you know. So oh, it was wow. that was for me that was big money. No, it's still big money. It's still, yes, absolutely. It's still big money. <laughs> absolutely, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. All right. So, and it's, it's, this is actually a funny story because I was at it was the first season of the Facts of Life, and instead of the four girls that everyone remembers, I think they had seven or eight. One of them was Molly Ringwald, and it was I was an extra in a party scene. So there were maybe twenty five extras and. They put me at the front of the party with, uh, to be talking to uh, a girl at the party, and sh- and they said off the top, uh, one of the girls will enter from the kitchen. The, the girl next to me, will, who I'm talking to, will order, uh, offer a pretzel from a bowl of pretzels to the, the star, and the star will take the pretzel and then continue on and do the same. Yes. Okay. Uh, I know that took about five minutes to say, but... <laughs> no, but I like it. Okay, I like it. <laughs> the detail. This is yeah, the detail. So, oh, yeah. exactly. right. I so like I, it. So I'm standing with the girl with the pretzels, okay. And my only thought was, how do I get noticed? You know, this is what every producer wants from their extras, yeah. right? Liking it before, loving it now. Yeah, okay. Oh, going. <laughs> how, do I, how do I get noticed? So, they, and this is, they're only, you know, we didn't have a rehearsal. We're just the extras. They just throw us in at the last minute. And, and there's the audience, studio audience. And they quiet down, and I, and I knew what exactly what I was going to do. I forget who it was. I think maybe it might have been Molly Ringwald comes out. She goes over to my, uh, the girl I'm talking to to reach in and take a pretzel. The same time she reached in and take a pretzel, I put as many fingers in the pretzels as I could. I just got my fingers all in there, and I picked up, like, as if I was the class clown, and I picked up like maybe 10 pretzels in my hand at once. And like, hey, look at, you know, like, look at me. I'm like, as if I was just you know, being, a, being a clown for both the girls. And it actually got a little titter from the audience, and then and then the uh, Molly Ringwald, whoever, went off and did her scene. So they finished the scene, and you know the, the buzzer and the okay, let's yeah, reset, and you reset, and we're gonna we're gonna do it again. So I'm waiting to hear you know anything, and I don't hear anything, which is good news, you know. Yes. I'm almost like you know, will I get a note maybe, yeah. or <laughs> <laughs> waiting for my notes from the director? <laughs> but nobody says a word, so I'm thinking, okay, I'm in, great. Let's do it. I'm going to do it again. And uh, so they reset. Warm-up guy quiets the audience down. And the director goes, okay. And the stage manager says, okay, here we go. In five, four, hold. And it's like just deathly quiet. And he looks right at me. <laughs> and he walks toward me and he goes, come with me. <laughs> he says, come. He, does the, he gives me the, uh, the come with me finger. Uh-oh. And he puts me in back of the party. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> did that crush you? No, it did. I, I was glad they put me in back of the party and didn't remove me from yeah. the party. Well, a, a year later when I did the, uh, was a guest star on The Facts of Life, I asked the director if he remembered me from from that, Before. you know, from being the extra. And he goes, 
Oh, yeah, yeah, you stood out too much. That's all he said. <laughs> but, yeah, but it wasn't a put down. It was just. No, no, it was just I like, think oh, it, yeah, the type of thing is that until that you're signed on to do that. Yeah, exactly. You, they don't, you, they don't, you don't want you to do that. And it wasn't, that that's it wasn't case. about the extras or it wasn't about the party scene. It was about the whatever, the, you know. And this reminds me, this takes, uh, to head of the class, that had to be, I mean, the huge. Leap. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, it really was. When I, uh, I, I got in late on the auditions for that. Because I was, that was about 16, it was a, the show was about 16 year old kids. I was 27. Yeah, so I, I was, they, I, they were actually looking for 16 year olds to begin with. And if, I, if you actually stood me up next to a 16 year old, as young as I looked, I don't think I was gonna, you know. Pass. But they started uh, casting older people for the more, ex- to have, have a little more experience. So I think I got in like late in the going and I remember the casting director just looked at me and said, yeah, I guess you could probably, you could do this. and. So I, within the next day, I was auditioning for the producers and the director. They, I remember the, first, I, I walked in and the director said, uh, how old are you? And I said, 22, which I figured I could pass for easily. And in fact, even after I left, I went, why did I say I was 22? I could have gone with 19, but I felt like I could pass for 20 right. easily. You know. And I was sorry that I lied, but after the 100th episode, you know, we, oh. had a, we had a party. And by that time, they knew all, everyone knew how old I was. And I asked the same producer, I said, if I hadn't lied, would I have gotten the part? And he said, well, let's put it this way, I never asked you again. <laughs> <laughs> Which would meant, no, I wouldn't have gotten the part. Well, you know? yeah. It's almost like they just wanted to hear it. So, yeah, but that was, that was a big... T- oh, so then, and then within, uh, like, two days later, I was auditioning with the network people. It was like a whole room. How was in, that? What was that like? That was like, it, was, it felt like a lecture hall at ABC... And it's very kind of darkened. There's like must be. It felt like thirty people. I don't know how sure how many people it was. And I'm reading a, a scene where I'm trying to uh, ask a girl out on a date, but I'm reading it with the you know forty five year old balding producer. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but again, I, I I just used my background from having played a nerd already several times. Uh, and I the next day my agent called and said you got the part <laughs> was that one of the ha- I mean it was euphoric moments it was it was the it was it was one of the yes it was one of the euphoric moments and although I felt I felt like when I left the audition that I had the part so it was just kind of like uh, an affirmation <laughs> when they finally called me the agent was like how come you're not jumping up and down I said because I already felt like I had the part <laughs> but but the most fun was calling my father to tell him I got the part oh. that was the most fun how did he he loved it because he was my my father was a CPA, as I mentioned, but he was, he had been uh, in college, you know, a thespian. He, he wrote sketch, oh, com- he wrote sketch nice. comedies and was in a few of them. I, I have one of his uh, programs from his college days. When he heard, you know, I, I just knew that he would be excited about it. And he, and he was kind of my quiet, I felt like he was kind of the silent partner. When mom was saying, no, stay in school, no, go back to NYU, no, you know. No, to stay here, and you really don't have to do that. And no matter what he said, you still probably felt that little "keep going." So. Yeah, he, I, it was almost like he—he he never actually said that, but I just kind of felt from him that that was, you know. And we, and we had a lovely moment before I left for Los Angeles because he was—he you know, was one of the '40s, you know, '50s dads. You don't say "I love you," and you just—it's um, about the manly hugging, if anything, if there's any touching to be done, like, <laughs> you know, the, the patting, you know. Yeah. Here he is. There he is. Very good. Yes, that's right. Yes. How about those? <laughs> uh, he, he was a big Yankees and baseball fan, so. Uh, um, but there was I, but the day before the, the moment I was leaving for Los Angeles, my mother left, and then my father and I just gave my father just gave me a long hug. It was just a beautiful one of those beautiful moments that I knew it was. Um, I knew how much it, it mattered to him, and how much I mattered to him, and that sort of thing. One of those seminal moments, <laughs> and so I knew it when I, when I called him to say that, hey, I got this. Got they got this part. I just thought he would be more excited, as, as at least as excited as I was. Uh, and they invited all their friends over to watch the pilot, and you know, so it was it was a very exciting time. So when when you shot it, did you feel prepared, or, or was that a moment of like, oh crap, now I have to really do this, or did you say, you know, I'm just I'm, I feel good about it? Uh, I felt great about it. I just yeah, there was no there was no just just as it was like when when I felt it was time to go to Los Angeles. And I, I saw comedians coming out to Los Angeles and getting on TV, and I just thought, "Oh, I gotta go do that." Okay, I, it, there was like no stop to yeah, it. Yeah, we talked once. Yeah. Um, we, we we trained at the same gym together. Yeah, so that's when you know you're in LA. You know, I know that guy from the gym. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but um, you mentioned confidence for. 
Yeah, I think you had an unusual amount of it as you. I think so. Kind of I, I think so. Uh, whether it was earned or not, <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know, but I can't say for sure. But yeah, when it came to doing that part, I just, I, you know, it was just kind of full speed ahead. Let's. And just know, in general, though, you said you had like this confidence. Yeah, I, I never felt like I wasn't going to make it. There, there, there were some moments. Uh, when I was you know, struggling, I'd do a guest star spot, and then there'd be a year where nothing happened, mm-hmm. and I'd start thinking, okay, maybe Mom was right. I could go back to college and go back to NYU. But then something else would come up, or I'd have a you know a nice win in acting class. Um, so you were studying. Yeah, I was. Along. I studied with a teacher, Daryl Hickman, who's oh, yeah. I still consider a, a mentor. Uh, and then later on, it was like after I was on the show, I went. to I continued studying at the Beverly Hills Playhouse for five years under uh, Jeffrey Tambor. Yeah, Jeffrey Tambor. What yeah, a yeah. wonderful comedian. Oh, my goodness. He works for Time and time and time. Yeah. He's always working, that man. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and with good reason. I don't know, technique for... It was mostly... Did, did you then work single camera things, too, as well? Uh, yeah, I did Did you find a difference some... in those? No, I think I think with single camera, you, it's less presentational, perhaps. You really, it's okay. really you just kind of let the... You just live it and let the camera come, you know, let, let the life, come, let the camera come to you, where it's a little single camera things. Whereas I think with the sitcom world, you have to inch it a little bit. You have to give it a little, just a little extra, you know, a little bit of a larger than life. Guest stars that were interesting coming through there. Because that can be kind of neat when you're working on a series, then you have other people coming oh. in. You go, oh, I know them, oh, yeah. or I remember them. Well, I, I don't know if you remember Jack Guilford, who was uh, one of the great character actors of, you know, vaudeville, and then oh. he was, funny thing happened on the way to the forum. He was, oh, so I remember I was excited when he was there. Uh, but a, a lot of the, Brad Pitt was a guest star on the show once. Oh, really? What was that like? Uh, he, was he, know, he just pretty brand new? Yeah, he was new. I had no idea. You know, he, he wasn't Brad Pitt yet. <laughs> he wasn't. <laughs> he wasn't who we know as Brad Pitt. What was um, he playing? He was playing a, uh, a stupid character who um, one of the girls in our class likes, and so she has to act stupid around him in order to be accepted by him. Oh. But then in our class, we're the smart kids, she has to keep being smart. So when he walks into the class once, she has to like you know all of a sudden act stupid so he'd be comfortable. <laughs> and, nice. and, and you know what? Brad Pitt was a good actor because I didn't really have a chance to, to talk to him much. I actually thought he was kind of a stupid guy. Because <laughs> he, he totally just, sold it. Yeah, he totally sold it. He would just kind of sit around looking dopey, and I just thought, well, he's a good-looking guy, but he's you know obviously an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, God bless him for being good. Anyway, he's like one of the big stars of our day, you know, and and, and I'm obviously uh, highly intelligent. Yes, he is. Yeah, yeah. Was there ever uh, a moment where? Uh, you talked about like you you just felt it in the audition. Was there ever a moment uh, while taping a show that where you just felt like, oh, this is this is it. This is I've, I've like solved the equation of acting. <laughs> like oh. I've got it. I've got it in the palm of my hand. Yeah, there was maybe one, two shows, two episodes of Head of the Class where I felt, uh, boy, I couldn't have done better than that. And it was it was those couple times where I really had a chance to to do some meatier acting. Is there was one episode where. My character's father comes to because I I was played a mathematician. I, I was a math student. Uh, my father was a um, a math professor. I think he's a retired math professor, and he's invited to come and teach the class and be the math teacher for a class. But he he talks over everybody, and no one knows what the heck he's talking about. Uh, so uh, it falls on me to tell him that it's not working out. And we had a, it was really a, this lovely scene between me and. Uh, Bruce Gray. Ah, the name comes out. <laughs> Pull that out of my socks. <laughs> um, uh, to tell, you know, to, to tell, it was a really nice scene between this actor and myself. And, and uh, so I, I remember just feeling really good about that particular one. There was a, a couple moments with uh, where I acted with Dan Snyder. Uh, we did a, a scene from The Honeymoon. That was your buddy. Yeah, right. He played my yeah. buddy Dennis on the show. Yes. Uh, we had a. There was an episode where I had. A, or I was daydreaming, and we'd come up, and they'd show the daydreams, and one of them was, we were, uh, on, we were the honeymooners, you know, uh, Ralph and uh, Norton. Norton, yeah, exactly. So I played Norton, and I think we kind of, we really kind of. So there were a couple moments. Uh, there was an episode where uh, the the uh, the class uh, loose girl has a crush on me, and then there's there was like a long scene with the girl in her apartment. 
Uh, I, you know, it's one of those things you'd have to see it, but I, there, there were just a right. couple. There were a couple moments. But it, that was, I was that was that any kind of um, those moments? Were there any moments where you you sort of either physically or something where you say, "I really get what this is"? Like maybe before I maybe kind of pushed mm. something, or I did think, and now I'm just settled into it, and yeah. it's coming from you. There were some moments. Like there were some. Mom- there were some moments where I felt I was. I, I I would look back on it and go, eh, "Pushing a little bit." Mm-hmm. Pushing a little bit more than you need to, mm-hmm. um, but for the most part, I, I think I just kind of a, save one or two episodes. Uh, just kind of fell into it, and then it became pretty much second nature. Yeah, because I noticed, like even you know, when, like I said, you get the three laughs. Even when you just decide to, you know, at the end of a scene, you just smile or something like that, and it would get a laugh. Yeah, it just seemed to be so effortless for you. Well, that that came from doing stand up because I I would do the stand up, and if a joke didn't work. I kind of realized that if I made a dumb face, people would laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so, nice. you know? so I think... So but I, it, uh, it wasn't like you muscling the face. It was just you. It really did come from you it, right yeah. in that moment, I yeah. guess. So, so I think from the stand-up, I put that... It's, it's, as a matter of fact, I think you're talking about that one line in particular that yeah. you did to the car because I did a dumb, la- a dumb face after that. Right. I got a, it got a big laugh. Got a but that was, that was direct from my stand-up act. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What was your favorite role or moment that you ever had as an actor? That's a good question. I'm, uh, I don't. Th- I don't know that I have a favorite moment, but I, I think maybe those parts I was telling you about those those couple scenes. There were some times when I felt very connected, and something would happen out, and uh, if, and I was able just to acknowledge it and stay in the moment. But I think my, uh, unfortunately, I think the best work I've done has been on. State well, I wouldn't say unfortunately because it's great to do great work on stage. It's just that only you know select people people saw it. Right. True. Uh, so my best so so uh, I wrote a play for instance that was produced by the Beverly Hills Playhouse called About Faith. I played a a, a, a Jewish stockbroker who falls for a devout Catholic woman who's a who runs a gallery. You so, wrote that? Yeah, I wrote oh. it, and, and they uh, and I it was double cast. I was I, I was in my you know one of the casts playing my part really. My character. It was and based on a true life story, oddly enough. Um, but I think there there were moments there where I really felt uh, I had, I had a, I was in a different place even since the sitcom had ended uh, in my acting. And um, I don't know. Hopefully one day I get to do something. Do you feel like the writing is uh, is just as satisfying these days, or is it come because you have a book? Oh yeah, yeah. The writing, the writing was was much fun. I wrote it. What was it like writing a book? Because you know, they all, everybody always says, "When I write that book, yes. and nobody writes nobody actually it." Does it? Yeah, that's true. And so you actually did. Yeah. What's the name of that? The uh, the book I wrote is uh, has nothing to do with acting. It's uh, oh. it was for kids, and a, uh, it was just a story I'd come up with. It's called it's, the book is called Jackson and Jenks Master Magicians. Uh, it's a book about magicians, and if you happen to go to bookaboutmagicians.com, <laughs> you will see. You don't have to remember Jackson Jenks Master Magicians. Just bookaboutmagicians.com. You will see my book. It's uh, available at Amazon. Yes, Amazon. So, it was in Barnes and Noble, and okay. uh, you can order it and such. But it's a, a book uh, primarily for preteens, like say ten okay. to twelve year olds, but. Um, the adults who bought it were telling me that they really liked it too, oh, yes. uh, and it's about two amateur magicians who picture themselves being a young Siegfried and Roy, you know, type of uh, magic team, uh, but they're awful, they're amateurs, and they always mess up. And however, a supernatural occurrence turns one of them into a real magician who can do anything, oh, and because of that, they become instantly world famous because. They could do anything. They right. can make the Leaning Tower of Pisa stand straight. They can they can do anything. But at a White House performance, they turn the president into a guinea pig, and then all of a sudden their powers are gone, and the president's a guinea pig. Oh, boy. So it becomes what they what you know what they what they have to do to get him back before the government like, you know opens their brains to find out what's going on. You know, you know, right. And, and, That's and, what the and, government and, does. They yeah. open everyone's brains <laughs> they to find do. out. We've seen enough television to know they open your brains. They open your brains. Absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, so, they, so the kids are on the run and they have to solve the problem before uh, they get in too much trouble. 
I'm 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 sensing audio book if you haven't already done. Yes, I have to do the audio. Yes, it, it, <laughs> no, it, you have to do it because you yeah. know one thing. You know, I've noticed when we like this is our second podcast, and you have a distinct voice, and I'm 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 really realizing lately what an amazing thing. Sometimes the, I think American actors maybe give it the short shrift or anything. Not like we're trying to project or do anything, but it's amazing the voice though. And yeah. you come in. Well, oh, well, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. He enters the room mm-hmm. with, with the voice, and it's it's a huge part, I think, of what you do besides the physicalizing too. Yeah. So I think it's a real thanks kind Thank of you. a marriage. And I know what you really want to do, which is direct, <laughs> and you are directing. Uh, yes, I uh, I was I directed three episodes of Nickelodeon's sitcom called Sam and Cat. Uh-huh. And last week the show got canceled. So, oh, cool. <laughs> oh, I heard about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was working with my uh, old acting head of the class crony, Dan Snyder, who's like the Nickelodeon hit maker. He's done like five, six Nickelodeon shows, and he's got another one coming up. So we'll see oh, what happens so there. Uh, but meanwhile, I'm uh, coaching. I'm kind of a substitute teacher at uh, with uh, Alan Levin's uh, school, and then and I'm, I'm looking to open my own. What is it, Alan school. Levin's school? Uh, Alan has a uh, school called Life Book Acting. It's in Studio City. And he has two theaters. Uh, so I go in there every so often. And I, and I love it. Whenever I go in there and teach, I kind of I just I'm really feel like I'm helping and being fed at the same time. So I think it's uh, high time I put up my own shingle. I think so. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So that's, uh, that's kind of in the works. Oh, that's terrific. That's, uh, yeah. And more writing. I'm doing more writing. I finished a screenplay end of last year. A family comedy that's uh, based on Cyrano de Bergerac, but it's about a Brooklyn parrot with a long neck, and it's called Cyrano the Bird Giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, and uh, so I'm putting up some finishing touches on that. That one agent has it, and I'm obviously have to be making more phone calls. So that's the end of our second segment with Dan Frischman. I hope he opens up a school. I think he'd be a good teacher. I think so too. Be sure to tune in next week when we have our third and final segment with Dan when he talks about voice acting, meeting Steve Martin, as well as advice for young actors out there. This has been Actor Chats with Dan Frischman. (laughs) 